Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for April 4th. And for anyone listening real time, I'm sorry, I, I dropped behind. A lot of times I record a couple a day just so I can stay ahead. And um, it's just been crazy. We've been moving from living almost full time in an RV thousands of miles away back home and getting resettled. And so, yeah, it's been busy. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get I'll get caught up again and be able to um, have the videos come out early in the morning on the day of. But um, it's not early in the morning now, and I'm just now recording today's. So bear with me. We'll get back there. So again, for April 4th, 1 Samuel 28 through 31, and these are the last four chapters of this book. Yay. First one. In those days, the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. Achish said to David, Know assuredly that you will go out with me in the army, you and your men. David said to Achish, Therefore you will know what your servant can do. Achish said to David, Therefore I will make you my bodyguard forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and burned him, no, I'm sorry, buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. Saul had sent away those who had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. The Philistines gathered themselves together and came and encamped at Shunem, and Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw that the army of Philistines, excuse me, when Saul saw the army of Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of Yahweh, Yahweh didn't answer him by dreams, by Urim, or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek for me a woman who has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. His servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman who has a familiar spirit at Endor. Saul disguised himself and put on other clothing and went, he and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. Then he said, Please, consult for me by the familiar spirit and bring me up whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Behold, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off from those who have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? Isn't that interesting? He forbid it, but then he was tempted to go and do it himself. So he knew it was wrong. Kind of like making a diet and then breaking your diet, right? <laughs> so um, she's saying, Why have you laid up this trap for me? You know, we're not supposed to be doing this. Because Saul said so. And she didn't realize it was Saul in front of her. So she said, um, no, it says verse 10, Saul swore to her by Yahweh, saying, that's very serious. Very serious mistake. He's lying using Yahweh's name. So it says, Saul swore to her by Yahweh, saying, as Yahweh lives, no punishment will happen to you for this thing. Then the woman said, whom shall I bring up to you? He said, bring Samuel up for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What does he look like? She said, An old man comes up. He is covered with a robe. Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and showed respect. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me to bring me up? Saul answered, I am very distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answers me no more by prophets or by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may make known to me what I shall do. Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since Yahweh has departed from you and has become your adversary? Yahweh has done to you as he spoke by me. Yahweh has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, even to David. Because you didn't obey Yahweh's voice and didn't execute his fierce wrath on the Amalek. I'm sorry, on Amalek. Therefore, Yahweh has done this thing to you today. Moreover, Yahweh will deliver Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Yahweh will deliver the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell immediately his full length on the earth and was terrified because of Samuel's words. There was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day or all night long. The woman came to Saul and saw that he was very troubled and said to him, Behold, your servant has listened to your voice, and I have put my life in, in my hand and have listened to your words, which you spoke to me. Now, therefore, please listen also to the voice of your servant and let me set a morsel of bread before you. Eat that you may have strength and 
when you go on your way. But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, constrained him, and he listened to their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat on the bed. The woman had a fattened calf in the house. She hurried and killed it and took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread of it. She brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they ate. Then they rose up and went away that night. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites encamped by the spring, which is in Jezreel. The lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men passed on in the rear with Achish. Then the princes of the Philistines said, What about these Hebrews? Achish said to the Philistines, excuse me, to the princes of the Philistines, Isn't this David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, who has been with me these days, or rather these years, and I have found no fault in him since he fell away to, to today? But the princes of Philistines were angry with him, and the princes of the Philistines said to him, Make the man return, that he may go back to his place where you have appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become an adversary to us. For with what should this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Should it not be with the heads of these men? Isn't this David, of whom people sang to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Then Achish called David and said to him, As Yahweh lives, you have been upright, and you're going out, and you're coming in with me in the army is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in you since the day of your coming to me in this day, to this day. Nevertheless, the lords don't favor you. Therefore now return and go in peace, that you not please the lords of the Philistines. Excuse me, that you not displease the lords of the Philistines. David said to Achish, but what have I done? What have you found in your servant so long as I have been in your, uh, been before you to this day? that I may not go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king. Achish answered David, I know that you are good in my sight as an angel of God. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. Therefore now rise up early in the morning with your servants of your lord who have come with you. And as soon as you are up early in the morning and have light, depart. So David rose up early, he and his men, to depart in the morning to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. When David and his men had come to Ziklag, on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid on the south and on Ziklag, and had struck Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They didn't kill any, but carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captive, Ahinoam and the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal. Excuse me, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the souls of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in Yahweh, his God. Yep, because that's what David did. That was the secret sauce of his success. Let me read that again. It says, but David strengthened himself in Yahweh, his God. I wonder if that's when he wrote some of the Psalms that he wrote. David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Please bring the ephod here to me. Abiathar brought the, uh, brought the ephod to David. David inquired of Yahweh, saying, If I pursue after this troop, will I overtake them? He answered him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and will without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men who were with him, and came to the brook Basor, where those who were left behind stayed. Now it's funny that that answer that that Yahweh gave him. I've always remembered that verse from a sermon I heard, gosh, probably 30 years ago. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. That's probably how it's written in the King James. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. And isn't it interesting that someone could preach a sermon with a phrase like that to the point that I've never forgotten it to this day. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Um, that's a good, that's a good message. You know, a lot of the messages we listen to, we never, we don't remember any of them. 
But that one stuck with me. So that's just a little story about how this one verse brings me back. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. So David went, he and 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Basor, where those who were left behind stayed. But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so faint that they couldn't go over the brook Basor. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread, and he ate, and they gave him water to drink. They gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. When he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread and drank no water for three days and three nights. David asked him, To whom do you belong? Where are you from? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to Amalekite, and my master left me, because three days ago I got sick. We made a raid on the south of the Cherethites, and on that which belongs to Judah, and on the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. David said to him, Will you bring me down to this troop? He said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me and not deliver me up into the hands of my master. Excuse me. See, there's another example of how they believed in the power of their words. And they believed in the power of a vow and the supernatural. You see the supernatural all throughout this book. Because he said, Swear to me by God. And that was enough for him. See, they believe that if you made that kind of a vow and you were lying, that it was going to come back on your head. Um, much like when we put our hands on the Bible today and make a vow. It's a serious thing. There's a lot of those politicians that make those kind of um, pronouncements irreverently. They don't understand what they're doing to themselves. That's that's what I believe. They don't They don't understand that it has consequences if they just flippantly make that kind of a vow all right verse 16 when he had brought him down behold they were spread around all over the ground eating drinking and dancing because of all the great plunder that they had taken out of the land of the philistines and out of the land of judah david struck them with the twilight from the twilight even to the evening of the next day not a man of them escaped from there except 400 young men who rode in camels and fled. David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and David rescued his two wives. There was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither plunder nor anything that had that they had taken to them. David brought back all. David took all the flocks and the herds, which they had driven before the other livestock, and said, This is David's plunder. See how God did exactly what he said. They recovered all. Okay, so David came to the 200 men who were so faint that they could not follow David, whom also they had made to stay at the brook Basar. And they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. When David came near to the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked men and base fellows of those who went with David answered and said, Because they didn't go with us, we will not give them anything of the plunder that we have recovered, except to every man his wife and his children, that he may lead them away and depart. Then David said, Do not so, my brothers, with that which Yahweh has given to us, who has preserved us and delivered the troop that came against us into our hand. Who will listen to you in this matter? For as his share is who goes down to the battle, so shall his share be who stays with the baggage. They shall share alike. It was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this day. When David came to Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you from the plunder of Yahweh's enemies. He sent it to those who were in Bethel, to those who were in Ramoth of the south, to those who were in Jatir, to those who were in Aor, and to those who were in Sifmoth, to those who were in Eshtimoa, to those who were in Rechal, to those who were in the cities of the Jeremelites, to those who were in the cities of Kenites, to those who were in Hormah, to those who were in Borishon, to those who were in Athak, to those who were in Hebron, to those who were, and to all the places, sorry, and to all the places where David himself and his men used to stay. Chapter 31, last chapter. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. So now we're back to the Philistines that sent David and his men away. Remember, they were going to come against Israel. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain on Mount Geboah. 
The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Mount Teshua, the sons of Saul. The battle went hard against Saul, and the archers overtook him, and he was greatly distressed by reason of the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was terrified. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor-bearer, and all his men that same day together. When the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley, and those who were beyond the Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. On the next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. <clears throat> they cut off his head, stripped off his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines all around to carry the news to the house of their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the house of the Ashtoreth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. When the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose, went all night, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shan, and they came to Jabesh and burned them there. They took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh, in, excuse me, Jabesh, and fasted seven days. So that's the end of First Samuel. Um, I'm excited to see what's going to change now that Saul is dead. And actually, as we learned at the beginning of this book, First Samuel and Second Samuel are actually one book, just divided in two. So the story continues, the saga continues uh, tomorrow with the advent of Second Samuel. Until then, God bless you. Thanks for joining me.